And we have on our uh, newsmaker line with us this morning, uh, Steuben County Sheriff Jim Allard. Sheriff, thank you for joining us. Good morning, Brian. Thanks for having me. It's a beautiful day in Steuben County. Sure is. Uh, well, Sheriff, we reported on our news just now there were protests in Alfred and Hornell last night. I see on uh, WETM and the Corning Leaders website that there's been protests over in um, uh, Corning and uh, Elmira. Um, wondering uh, on uh, on the protest, uh, the situation, your thoughts, and um, pretty much all the protests locally have been peaceful from what, from what we can tell. Yes, I I think that in this area, I think we connect well and work in partnership. Police and the community work well in partnership. And you've seen uh, protests of national events locally that have all been peaceful, I think in recognition in large part because we do talk and we do work together and, and we do live within the same communities that we police. Um, you know, when I look at our deputies who in response to us are doing a phenomenal job by the way they're all working extra hours to make sure that we have adequate coverage throughout the county and in case uh some of our partners get pulled away to other areas um but when you look at the fact that our deputies and our police officers in this county are little league coaches volunteer firefighters um they work on the ambulance services they volunteer times at their at their local houses of faith I think that we do a good job of making sure that we are part of the community and, and we share the concerns of all the community. Sheriff Ballard, uh, Congressman Tom Reed was on a show called uh, Fox Friends First yesterday. Here's some audio from that. Arrested in New York City with felony charges are being set free and could be capable to do more damage, all thanks to New York's new bail reform laws. Somebody saw a protester, uh, excuse me, a looter arrested. The reality of the situation is that that looter will probably be back in three hours and we'll have to catch him again. I would appreciate a little bit of leadership from the executives across this state. So as civil unrest continues across the city, doesn't this just prove how broken New York system is? Congressman Tom Reed joins us now to weigh in. Congressman, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. That's good to be with you. I appreciate it. I mean, if you take a look at some of these numbers here in New York, some of these arrests as of now, more than 980 protesters arrested since Monday, more than 400 expected released since Tuesday. I mean, talk about the implications here of these new bail reform laws that went into effect in January. People have been arguing these since the beginning. Yeah, so first, let me be clear. I support the peaceful protesters. I support the justice that's being done for George Floyd and his uh, family in regards to the arrest of the bad actors of those law enforcement officers. But what we're talking about is standing with law enforcement and making sure that when you have extreme leftist policies like this bail law that essentially says when you're arrested, you don't stay in jail, you get immediately released and put back on the streets, that's dangerous. And you're seeing the results of that. That's the now, that's uh, Congressman Tom Reed there, Sheriff Jim Allard. Uh, the latest, of course, is that afterwards, uh, after that interview, uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo um, put out a statement saying that the looters and rioters should be arrested. Your thoughts, Sheriff Allard? Well, I think it's important that we make a distinction between protesters and people that are committing criminal acts. I think, as you've seen in Stabenne County, we've had several protests all peaceful, all people who believe very strongly in their position and want to make a change peacefully in the way in which the government works. That's part of being an American citizen. What we're seeing in other areas are criminals who are taking advantage of these protests as an opportunity to cause havoc, create crime, damage, and loot. And I think to call those folks protesters demeans what the true protesters are doing. And also, let's deal with crimes as they occur, whether it's in the public or in the, in the law enforcement community. This is the message. When crimes occur, we deal with them. We let the system work. And if we don't like the way the system works, then we challenge our politicians to change the system. Before we move on to the uh, topic of uh, COVID-19 and phase two and all that, did you have any final thoughts? Or and did you have any thoughts on the, uh, 
the whole uh, George Floyd situation, the original situation with uh, Floyd's head being stepped on. That is a tremendous tragedy. When I wa- the first time I saw that video, I, I was heartbroken because I I had a foreshadowing of what was to come. Because there's no person that can watch that video and not be affected, and uh, I feel for all members of our society that are affected by that. Not only the members of law enforcement who see that the legitimate members of law enforcement who look at that and go, Oh my, Oh my heavens, what, what did he just do to the family of the, of, of Mr. Floyd that now are dealing with this loss. It's it's just such a terrible tragedy that resulted in everything we're seeing now. And, uh, you know, I just think bad things happen. And again, we have to let the system deal with it, and we have to let the adjudication process work, and we have to accept the outcome. Talking to uh, Steuben County Sheriff Jim Allard. Now moving on to uh, COVID-19. Uh, we're into uh, phase two. How have things been going in the second phase of the reopening, Sheriff? I think they're going very well. Uh, we see still see a few cases trickle through, but when you look at our rate of transmission... Uh, it's almost zero. And when you look at the number of active cases we still have, I believe it's under 30 now. And I think that the folks in Stabin County especially have been doing a phenomenal job of meeting the requirements. Uh, I'm not sure why we're still in a state of emergency. I don't quite understand that. But by and large, the citizens of Stabin County have been doing everything they're supposed to do to make sure that we stay safe and healthy and we flatten that curve. I don't think there's been a single case of an emergency room or medical provider being overrun and and unable to keep up. And honestly, most of the deaths we've seen, tragic as they are, have been as a result of policies forced down to the nursing homes from the State Department of Health. You know, this whole COVID-19 uh, situation uh, is something that we have never seen in our lifetime. Uh, you'd have to have been around during the flu epidemic of 1918 uh, to uh, have experienced anything close to it. Um, Steuben County Sheriff Jim Allard, looking back, uh, what what new experiences did you have in, in law enforcement and uh what did you What did you get out of it? What did you learn from the whole COVID situation? Uh, obviously, we made great strides in our use of technology. Uh, I always kind of kid that uh, most law enforcement executives are are dinosaurs like me that don't necessarily understand technology, and we're usually about ten years behind the curve in it. And this forced all of us to kind of step up to the plate and get educated on what's possible. We've been doing arraignments by Skype at the cap court. Uh, We've been doing court hearings by Skype through the cap court. Uh, We've been able to uh, really focus on the sterilization of our processes in the jail. Um, I don't want to jinx us, but we've had zero exposure either by employee or, or inmate in the jail and there's not a lot of counties that can say that. And we were aggressive from the start on screening our employees, screening and uh, our inmates, and also uh, making sure that we quarantined any new inmates until they were cleared by our medical department. And we've been extremely fortunate in that. So I think that the uh, cleanliness, the raising of the cleanliness level and the sterilization level throughout the public safety building is something I would love to see continue. But our use of technology uh, through meetings and through court appearances are things that we were never allowed to do before by the state. So I, I think that genie's out of the bottle, and I, and I hope we're able to continue to use that to great effectiveness because it really streamlines our uh, processes. Sheriff Allard, we've had you on numerous times uh, during this whole uh, COVID crisis, and Different times we've asked you about the drug problem in Steuben County. You've told us that the drug dealers uh, have taken advantage of the uh, COVID-19 situation. 
and I think it was uh, District Attorney Brooks Baker who said that uh, for some, the stimulus checks were used to uh, buy drugs in order to sell or just to buy drugs. Uh, yeah, it was Brooks Baker who said that on the show. Um, wondering what's the latest on the drug problem in Steuben County, Sheriff Allard? I, I believe at last count, because there hasn't been a, a convened grand jury since the start of this, and most of our drug investigations involve uh, undercover sales, which are then taken to a grand jury and an indictment if, if they meet the uh, threshold, an indictment occurs, and then a, and a warrant is issued. Uh, I believe right now I was speaking with uh, our counterparts at Bath PD and Corning PD just last week and Hornell PD. I think we have 80 cases in queue for grand jury, uh, almost all of them drug arrests that are waiting to occur. So that would show you that uh, usually we're in the 100, 160 for a year. This is just over the last three months. So I would say that that would indicate a, a, an increase. <laughs> yes. And how about the uh, domestic incidents? Um, you know, we've talked before and I've spoken with uh, other law enforcement agents and, again, uh, District Attorney Brooks Baker, and I talked about the, uh, you know, the whole situation with the pent-up anger, with people uh, all being confined to the same place, seeing more of each other than usual. How's the situation of uh, domestic incidents going? Well, anytime you have a period of time where unemployment spikes and people are forced to change the way they live their lives, there's going to be a frustration result of that. And we see that not only have we seen a slight increase in domestic calls, but also an increase in the level of violence. Uh, they seem to be more violent. And our, our folks are working with that. But, yeah, there's a lot of frustration with, A, being forced to stay at home, and, B, not having a job. And then the unknowns of, is that job going to be there when things open up? And I, am I going to be able to be back to work when things open up? And am I going to have to provide child care? Are my children going to be able to go back to school? All of these unknowns, I think, create significantly to uh, domestic violence and to frustration of people in general. Leandro's Law, has there been an increase in that? Leandro's Law, of course, being the law that uh, uh, where uh, you, uh, it's an automatic felony, uh, first offense to drive drunk with somebody 15 or younger inside your vehicle. Yes, I've seen a drastic increase in Leander's Law. I've also seen a drastic increase in uh, driving while ability impaired due to drugs. I, I almost, I feel like over this past two months, we've seen almost as many of those arrests as we have DWI arrests for alcohol, and that's extremely troubling also. Uh, we just had one three days ago uh, where the deputy made the arrest and the offender had three children under the age of five in the vehicle with him. And that's terrifying to me when we look at, you know, DWI and DWAI, um, alcohol-related deaths due to driving is still the number one cause of criminal deaths in Steuben County. So when I see an increase in, in children being in the vehicles, that's terrifying. Sure thing, sure thing. How about uh, meth and heroin, uh, Sheriff uh, Allard? We're still seeing uh, much more fentanyl than heroin right now, <clears throat> and we're still seeing uh, meth, uh, but we're seeing an influx of uh, crystal ice, they call it, uh, it's crystallized methamphetamine that's being shipped in. Uh, we just had that uh, major case where it was pounds of it being shipped in from outside the area, and uh, we're still we're still enforcing that. Obviously, investigating and continuing to take that, working with our federal counterparts to work on that. But there has been a, a pretty significant influx in uh, crystal meth coming into our area, not just the homegrown, homebrewed uh, methamphetamine one pot that we're used to. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back uh, in just a moment with Stupin County Sheriff Jim Allard. Stay with us. Hello, Walker Metalsmith. This is Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. I'm trying to find just the right gift for my wife's birthday. 
How can a guy shop in these difficult times? It's easy. Just let me help you. But I like to see and feel things before I buy them. You can see our wide range of fine, locally made Celtic jewelry on our website at walkersceltichewelry.com. But what if she already has the piece I picked out? Or if it's the wrong size? It's easy. Our return and exchange policy is very generous. But now we're making it even easier. Just talk to me, we'll work out a what-if plan, and I'll put it right in your order notes. Thank you, Jeannie. I find it hard enough shopping for jewelry. I've been helping people choose my dad's jewelry since I was a kid. Once I even sold a pair of earrings in the dark during a power failure. When the lights came back on, she loved them. I've had lots of practice, and I know how to make it easy for you. At Walker Metalsmiths, we do some really difficult things and make it look easy. Shop online or call 607-478-8567. Springwater Amish Workshop in Springwater is once again open for business. You know, summer living is here. Enhance your outdoor living spaces with quality constructed Amish-made furniture and accessories of polyvinyl or southern yellow pressure-treated pine. Do your baby chicks need a home? Springwater Amish Workshop has chicken coops in stock. 2020 storage sheds and gazebos are arriving weekly or they can order just what you want. That's Springwater Amish Workshop. 7936 Mill Street, that's Route 15, in Springwater. And check out their website, SpringwaterAmishWorkshop.com, to see what they can do. Back on this Friday morning with Stupen County Sheriff Jim Allard on our newsmaker line. In this half hour, we've got Dr. Robert Heinemann coming up at his regular time of uh, 8.30 this morning. And... Uh, on your website now, uh, Sheriff, and uh, I see a link for, uh, let's see, anonymous tips. And we were talking a little bit about uh, the uh, drug and alcohol problem in Steuben County. When I think of the anonymous tips, uh, usually you think of drugs, but uh, certainly you must get some for alcohol and maybe in particular the underage drinking parties. We do. As a matter of fact, we had an arrest a uh, week and a half ago about a person who was revoked due to an alcohol conviction and was operating in violation of that revocation without having an interlock device in their vehicle. And we were able to make an arrest based on that tip. And uh, for every tip that comes in, uh, the majority of them are to do with drug use, but a lot of them are animal, animal abuse also. I but, see that, Sheriff, on your website. You have a whole list of things that people... Uh, can uh, call or email about animal abuse, arson and vandalism, uh, cyber crimes, identity theft, the list goes on and on. Yes, and, and every tip that comes in is assigned to a deputy or an investigator, or if it's an area where there's a local police department, we forward that information to that police department for their investigation and offer our assistance. But every tip that comes in is assigned, and we have uh, generated some some good cases and, and really been able to help people out in the community because of those tips. So keep those tips coming. You can also do that on our app, on the Sheriff's app. Uh, you can submit tips through that also. So there's, I think there's three ways. You can do it through the website. You can do it through 844 Drug Tip. And you can also do it through the Sheriff's app. But know that every tip we get is investigated. In the texting era, um, is that something that a lot of harassment charges stem from, angry and repeated angry texts? Yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of social media um, activity that, that results in arrest, too. Uh, we see it even in the jail. We see it where, pe where our, the inmates are trying to connect through a third party with a protected person that there's an order of protection against and uh, it results in an arrest. But uh, it's a definitely a different age when you can post to 30,000 people about a particular person via social media and the effect that that has on, on that person and on their life and their livelihood, and that's where it reaches into the criminal end is when it affects them negatively either to their their work or their ability to function within society. 
kind of curious on the uh, age of those who uh, are charged with uh, harassing texts. You know, I, I uh, you know, you always think of the younger people, not the guilt trip, the young, but you always think of the younger people as being the most uh, adept with the uh, technology. What, what, what kind of age groups are we talking about with social media and texting offenses, Sheriff? A lot of the, because it still goes back to what's the underlying crime. Is it harassment? Is it stalking? Uh, is it a violation of an order of protection? And uh, obviously for us to make an arrest uh, after raise the age, that person's going to have to be over age 18. Uh, otherwise, they're treated as a juvenile. So uh, when we're looking at this, we're looking at college age up to 30-ish typically. But it can be, it can, it can go older too. We've been speaking with uh, Steuben County Sheriff Jim Allard down to the last couple of minutes. Uh, any final thoughts? Anything I did not bring up, Sheriff, that you want to talk about? I, I just hope that throughout this weekend we all just take a moment to reflect and respect everyone's viewpoint and take that moment to actually reflect on the fact that we don't have to all agree but we do have to respect each other and listen to each other. Great advice from Sioux Bend County Sheriff Jim Allard. Uh, Sheriff, it's always great having you on. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, my pleasure, Brian. It's always uh, it's always a good time to be able to come on and, and uh, converse with you. Great. Thank you very much, Sioux Bend County Sheriff Jim Allard. Dr. Heineman coming up next.